What's going on everybody? I've got a great video for you today. Above and beyond this video being a Vambrace video, pretty awesome in itself. This is also a reminder that tomorrow is the draw for the $750 gift card that I'm giving away to Lonsdale Leather. If you haven't signed up yet, check the link in the description down below. Be subscribed to this channel. Maybe you'll get a $750 gift card. That would be fantastic, obviously. I know a bunch of you guys are probably wondering, how can I support this channel even more than I already do? Well, we now have a join button down below. You can get some emojis for use in the comments section and chats if I ever do some live streams. And hey, just helps support the channel, helps me do what I do, helps me make more videos, is greatly appreciated. If that's not your thing, sharing this video, liking it, subscribing, and leaving a comment, that'll be perfect, thank you. While we're doing some boring stuff, cutting up the pattern, just want to remind you guys that I've been designing some shirts for a while with my Viking inspired artwork. So I'll pop a couple up here and maybe you guys can check them out. Lonsdale Leather and I have been in partnership for a little while now. And this $750 gift card is all thanks to them. I know I'm giving it away, but big props to Lonsdale Leather for stepping up with the gift card. Make sure you sign up for it. It'd be awesome. And check out their website. Brand new website. One of the best leatherworking websites I've seen in a very long time. Make sure you check that out in the description down below. If I'm not carving something, I prefer to use a chrome tan or oil tan, something that's already pre-dyed. But I just used vegetable tan for this whole project because I've got a lot of vegetable tan. I don't want to be showing you guys multiple different kinds of leather you need for a project when you don't. If I was going to do this for somebody else or for myself, I would have the base layer as a pre-dyed chrome tan, oil tan, something like that. And then I can do the carved pieces as vegetable tan on top of that. So just something else for you guys to think about. I haven't done a magic trick in a while, so that one really made my day. What I said about chrome tan, oil tan for the body, that also is for the straps. So if I'm going to do this for somebody else or a personal project, well this was a personal project, for a non-video project where I want to show you guys that I'm just using one kind of leather, I would go with the chrome tan, oil tan, something pre-dyed. Uh, yeah, that's just how I roll. In case you're curious, each van brace has two pieces to carve, so four pieces to carve in total, and it's about 45 minutes to an hour for me to carve each individual piece.
for those of you seeing a video of mine for the first time, I do lots of leather carving. Uh, you have to wet vegetable tanned leather only, and then you use the appropriate tools to make your design, as you can see here. These Angelus die pens from Lonsdale Leather are super handy. It way beats trying to paint with a brush, which I have done a lot of in my time, and that's just silly. It's a hundred times faster, less chance of mistakes, really easy. Pick yourself up some. Uh, this is one of those things that I wish I had figured out a long time ago, because yeah, I painted with brushes for way too long. Every time you bring your brush over your piece, you're praying that the dye doesn't suddenly escape it and fall onto your project. Now, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this dark line work on top originally. In the end, you'll see I changed some stuff to try and make it pop a bit more because if you're doing a lighter knot work and then you do an antique stain over it, it helps bring that knot work to life, getting into the cracks, giving it a little bit of darkness to see. But this all kind of blended together in the end, so I did some sandpaper to it and some weird stuff. I can't wait to see what you guys do with the design as far as colors go. Um, mine was fun, it was interesting, but I'm not sure if it was the best choice. These Lonsdale leather dyes go on really evenly. They all are a bit lighter in color at first. Add a little oil, put your finish on it, and they work just fine. Um, I'm really impressed with how even they go on, though. It's really nice. If you want to combat streaking and you don't have a dye like this, um, wetting your project first or oiling your project can often help with that. Just, uh, you know, do some samples first, see how it goes. You can see here I'm rocking the Phoebings to get really dark brown. I want to match it to the brown that was in my uh, Angelus dye pen. Now we're back here with some more Lonsdale leather dye, the red which I haven't used before, and I'm just going to put it over the whole piece. I kind of crossed my fingers on this, I wasn't sure how it would look. I think in the end it looks pretty cool. Now I do add a finish to this and antique it, and that's where it starts to get a little muddy for me. My idea behind antiquing is always to blend your colors and make your knot work pop, but if you're using a dark antique and your top knot is already dark it kind of just makes it a little muddy in my opinion um i've never actually dyed anything in this reverse like this so hey live and learn and i just skipped over there quickly using some beeswax and a burnishing tool to make your edges nice and slick now i'm going to use some neat's foot oil and then let that set in a little bit it'll darken everything down give it some nice protection and make it a little more supple and then we're going to put our finish on everything and use that finish as a resist to apply some antique stain, which is where things went a little sideways for me. You don't have to use a spray gun to apply resiline at all. You can use like a very damp sponge. This just gives you better results, and it's a tool that I'm not willing to get rid of for the sake of videos. 
Um, yeah, so if you could get a chance to use a spray gun, I highly recommend it. We're using too much antique stain to, you know, stain our piece. So what happens is all this stuff gets into the cracks and then you wipe it away. So if you had a light knot, there would be dark recesses where you've got your cut lines, where you've got your bevels. And because we put a finish or resist on it first, it doesn't stain the red. It might stain the finish a tiny bit and give it a darker color. But if there was no finish on it, this whole piece would go really muddy colored really quick. If you're using heel bar buckles, you'll need some keepers. Otherwise, if you've got the old center bar buckles, don't worry about it. I just prefer the look of heel bar buckles, so I'm usually making keepers. You can staple them together or you can stitch them together. Whatever you prefer. I was probably overthinking it. This looks pretty good in the end, but I wanted to use a scotch Bright pad on it, see if I could make the knot pop a little more. And it's something that you guys can see me doing and maybe you can use it in a project sometime. You can see the little highlights coming through. Both look good, depends on your taste, I guess. There's another project for you guys to check out. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you did. Check out my website for patterns and artwork. Make sure you apply for that crazy Lonsdale Leather $750 giveaway. And obviously until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.